And here they are, so... As mentioned, uh, Francesco Maining, uh, 15 different interruptions. Uh, we'll see if he will actually open any of them, but it is Joshua who starts things off with one of his uh, infinite uh, runic cars uh, getting to the fountain. Let's see if Francesco will stop it. Uh, he's definitely taking his time here. Lava Golem, of course, not good going first gonna get discarded by Joshua and Francesco allows it right away. Interesting stuff. Yeah, Francesco is main decking basically 15 oh, end traps. Yeah. Uh, I mean, all of them, all the good ones. And also siding them uh, also. I mean, he has basically so all of them. So many, yeah. yeah, so many, so many. But for now, it didn't stop the Eugene, which is uh, somewhat interesting. And Joshua actually opens up uh, the kitten as well. Uh, here I would be shocked uh, if uh, Francesco let this gigantic resolve, uh, and he does. Uh, he's see. considering it. Yeah, he does have a response, and it is the infinite impermanence right away to stop the gigantic. Well, good stuff. Yeah, good stuff here by the Italian player. Let's see if Joshua has anything else. Uh, he passes back wow. to his opponent. Wow. What a turn by Joshua, already interrupted by just a single impermanence. Yeah, I mean, this is what we have seen. Uh, like, uh, if you have that interruption on the, your opponent's turn, he doesn't have any other extender. And he starts things off yeah. uh, with prosperity on top, uh, just trying to look for one of these uh, live twin uh, cards. Do you think, uh, I mean, this is a big tell because you would have activated the fountain if he had uh, some of the good spells. Yeah. Uh, this is a very weird end uh, from Joshua. Yeah, doesn't really have much going on. Uh, honestly, passing just with the Gigantic yep. on the field, uh, it's very quick start. And they absolutely buy six cards uh, from Francesco, really digging uh, for his deck. Uh, let's see if he can pick up any of them. He does. Uh, so, tough choice here, already seeing one of the tech cards, which is the Gamma in the main deck. You know I'm a fan of that, but yeah, not a difficult choice here. He will pick up uh, one of his Life Twins, uh, and uh, he does. So, Life Twin Lila is picked up. Uh, of course, uh, gonna be able to summon the one copy of the reskill from the deck, uh, and that's already a great start, right? Yeah, I mean, we have seen our uh, Sprite players this week and rely on different strategies, and so good. we have said that uh, the Evil Twin really has the possibility to splash a lot of monsters, especially with the Link monsters, yep. you're basically able to bring them up uh, turn after turn, and he also and has the And we see jet. the Jet as well coming down from the end. They can pick up the starter to just play super safe, but I mean, you see Lava Golem, you see Runix, uh, you don't really expect end traps that much, and it is the semi-final. You know what's going on, you know what your opponent uh, is playing, uh, and I think uh, Francesco is in a really good spot to advance uh, at least to game two. Let's see how he will do it and what he will try to do. Because also, to be fair, if he doesn't OTK right here, and it's basically impossible due to the prosperity, there is a good chance maybe another Lava Golem is in the end yeah, from Joshua. Yeah, there might be, especially because like Joshua passed without making any other action, so... Uh, he might be holding another copy of Lava Golem, I will not be surprised at all. Yeah. Uh, but as you said, Francesco here will try to push uh, as much as he can. And uh, we know that Joshua is not playing... Uh, any end trap yeah. at all. So yeah, he does not have anything at the moment. Uh, will just stay at the mercy of his opponent uh, who really has to play carefully about this Lava Golem because uh, there is a great chance, as mentioned, Joshua as a second copy. But outside of this, uh, I think uh, really, really great chances of taking this game one home. Uh, and uh, to be fair, I think uh, the deck list uh, is really solid. Yeah, I really like it. I mean, uh, the Evil Twin deck uh, that Francesco is playing uh, Looks super consistent, uh, also plays the enemy controller, which you've seen yeah. sometimes this weekend being very impactful. Absolutely, it's one of the best cards, and here Francesco is actually going for both carrot and blue into red, most likely. 
maybe disrespecting this Lava Golem or maybe just saying I'm gonna put up so much advantage that even if you drop it, uh, I'm still able to play the game. Uh, let's see. He does, so Joshua not really caring about uh, his opponent deck at the moment. Uh, not that he has many options. Uh, he has to find a way, of course, because the Gigantic at the moment uh, is uh, pretty shoot. Yeah. But I don't think uh, there is a word in which Francesco forgets about the double attack from Gigantic. And here we might see either the Elf or some of these Life Twins. It is the Elf indeed who is gonna bring back another sprite. And yeah, here we see the usual, the usual stuff from the deck going for the Evil Twins. I think this is a great start, honestly. And uh, yeah, here we were talking about this uh, even before. Uh, the key skill and the, the Lil are very good, especially because like you keep recycling them back mm -hmm. turn after turn, and here just pushing up for some yeah. damage. It does a lot uh, here, of course. Uh, every damage Joshua takes is off by the Prosperity. But outside of this, uh, it's a really, really good setup uh, and can't blame the Evil Twins for being this good of a deck. Yeah. And in the top four, we have two decks actually using this engine. So it's very interesting for sure. Still and your pick. what a setup by Francesco, who will pass play back to Joshua, who needs to pick up something. I'm expecting another copy of Lava Golem, most likely in the end, but can he really fight back? What a turn by the Italian. Let's see. Does he have it? He, he does. does. Uh, I mean, this is not much of a surprise. Of course, he was holding a second copy of Lava Golem, as mentioned. Uh, and I think uh, Francesco is still in a pretty solid spot to come and close this game. But can Joshua do something? We know the fountain in his hand. Yep. There are two more cards. That's what he's going to go for. And of course, Carrot and Elf really hurt because you want to, of course, negate those pluses, those advantage coming down from the Rooney cards. And here already starting things off, maybe destruction. Yeah, with destruction. Uh, which is really, really annoying. Uh, and uh, this is still uh, far from over. Joshua can definitely fight back uh, and get a lot of advantage going on. Obviously, the Smashers would be really, really, really good. But we actually go for the other effect. Interesting. Ooh, okay. okay. And I think he really needs to find something out of his deck because if he really wants to push for this play, then yep. uh, he might not be holding anything good. So he just needs to find his way. But let's see Francesco. He does have the Smashers and this is huge. Smashers on the fountain. Joshua has seen enough and he picks up his card. So it is Francesco winning game one. What a game, Good stuff. honestly. Joshua going first, uh, opening probably a below average and uh, trying to get to his Fountain and Runix, but all it took was one infinite impermanence for Francesco to stop him. Uh, wow, we definitely didn't see that coming. Uh, double Lava Golem going first. Uh, that's got to be one of those decisions, deck building decisions that worked out all the way to the top four, but maybe could cost him the game, and it did. So now let's look at the side decks. Uh, I saw that Joshua sometimes throughout the event uh, actually decided to go second against his opponents, trying to catch them off guard. And that is because on top of the free Lava Golem in the main deck, uh, he's siding three copies of Sphere Mode. So that's a lot of going second cards. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, also by going second, uh, like, you also have Forbidden Droplets, which is yeah. very powerful as well. Uh, we also see Joshua playing uh, the Thunder King Rayo. Yeah. Which he also seen previously, which I think is a very good card. And also, as they call by the grave, if he really wants to side mm -hmm. them in. If he wants to go first, I think it's one of these cards you really want to find. That's going to be the interesting aspect. Uh, as mentioned, when going second, Joshua has so many cards uh, for this. But going first, uh, his main strategy seems to be the mannequin. With the mannequin essentially cat, he has a few targets which are Thunder King Ryo, Chaos Hunter, and then one card which was hyped a lot on Friday, which is Testudo Erat 
Numen, a card, yeah, I'm not going crazy speaking Latin, it's actually the name of the card, uh, which is essentially an 1800 defense monster which says your opponent, or in general, you cannot special summon monsters with 1800 or more attack. That's scary against a lot of matchups. Yeah. So I'm really interested to see, first of all, is Joshua going to go first, is Joshua going to go second? His opponent, on the other hand, we know he's already maining 15 and chops, siding even more. Let's see who will be the winner of game two. What do you think he's siding in when it comes to Lorenzo? Uh, I mean, he has a lot of different options, but uh, he's playing the Artifact Sampton. I know you are a big fan of it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and also has the, the second smasher, which I think could be very impactful. Um, we have seen players sending him in uh, just in case, you know, for, sure. for, for like running games. And Cosmic is also as great well. against uh, Runic. But as you mentioned, Artifact Sanctum, such a strong card. One of my favorite cards of all time. Uh, not being played this weekend by many because Runic, you skip the battle phase, you cannot put the pressure. But in this deck, you absolutely can. And that's why the card is as stable as a free off in the side deck. Our players are almost ready. Let's go back to the game two of the top four. And here they are. So first of all, let's see if Joshua is going first or if he let his opponent go. I think uh, he might be the one to start things off uh, and he does with the starter already much better than game one. And we see the Ash Blossom. Ooh, and we see Ash Blossom <laughs> coming down from Francesco. Is it gonna be a quick one as game one? Uh, obviously Joshua's fan out there hoping that's not the case uh, and he goes for the fountain and he follows it up. Uh, okay, not, not gonna be as Bad as game one, he has uh, a pretty sick opening this time. Uh, wow, and another Ash Blossom was actually banished off the top. Uh, that's a good news from Francesco. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, now Joshua, I think, will try to yeah, get Yeah, he back. just moves uh, to either getting a second copy of Fountain or getting two draws from the deck. Uh, makes sense. Uh, and is there going to be a response? Uh, there are hardly any cards that could do it, so... It's gonna allow Joshua to draw two cards, obviously looking for any sprite uh, monster. Is he gonna be able to combo through? Let's see. He does, so he has the jet. Of course, uh, he won't be able to get another starter for this turn, but at least uh, he can guarantee one copy for the next uh, or just get the smashers, which is great uh, against any version of Sprite, really, and that's what he does. So now it comes down to, does Francesco have a response for the Gigantic coming up? Uh, Gamma would be insane. Does he have it? He does not, uh, so it seems as if it will resolve, so... Francesco opening only Dash Blossom, it seems. Uh, great news for Joshua. And yeah, he now can finally play the game a little bit more, get things going, and it's looking much, much better. Yeah, especially because like if you don't see any other end traps, you just mean uh, you, you activate the Ash on the start and then yeah. you just hope that that will be enough. Absolutely. And uh, Joshua, I think, will continue. Yeah. Yeah. Presses forward, goes into yet another runic spell, so setting up pretty much for the next turn the graveyard and will now go for the elf. Nothing too surprising. Uh, he has actually some interesting choices in the extra deck, of course. Uh, he could go, you know, all the way from uh, uh, Mascherena or Jin, which could be something we see. And here, Ooh. as expected, is the one card which Joshua has been relying for most of his games, uh, the Mannequin Cat. What an opening from Joshua. Uh, this is impressive, uh, because basically Joshua opened very strong, even if Ash Blossom was there. And now it's back to Francesco, which uh, actually is in trouble. Absolutely. Now it seems almost as it is an upfield battle for the Italian to win this game too. Let's see, I'm sure he's gonna try his best with 30 minutes on the clock. Uh, 
no need to rush to game three yet. So, Limey Storm coming down from the Italian. Wow. Wow. That's. Uh, <laughs> what we a way to start things off. Uh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. And here from the end, a tip from Joshua, which is gonna get actually the destruction chained. Is there gonna be another chain link from Joshua? He does have the starter, he goes for it. So still, still not over yet, but what a way to start things off. Yeah, I mean, for sure you put pressure on Joshua, which is now forced to activate all his effects. Uh, he brings the red on the field. Yeah, so he brings the red on the field. He still has the mannequin cat, which can give him uh, one or two different really good target at the moment, uh, being uh, the Testudo or the Thunder King Ryo. But let's see how he keeps banishing cards from the top. Uh, okay, banishing a few starters, which is never nice, but yeah. Nothing too important right now, and he gets rid of everything else uh, from the German player. Now, the question is, can Francesco push through? Does he have enough uh, to clear this? Uh, it's not an easy thing to do. We could see either a Thunder King Ryo, as mentioned, uh, or multiple options from this Mannequin Cat, depending what Joshua thought was the best option. Does Francesco have any other sort of uh, interruption that cause problems to Joshua? Yes. Yeah. Because honestly, I was worried when I saw he only had the Ash Blossom with like 18 hand traps between main and side. That we thought we was going to draw at least two. Yeah. And that's honestly uh, math talking, not me. But here we already see. Francesco committing. Uh, he will activate the effect. Uh, let's see if he decides to go for the effect in the first place. Yeah, he's considering it. Uh, it's the Lila once again. This is a tough spot, honestly. Yeah, it's still mm. honestly. The Lightning Storm obviously got us hyped and the crowd as well, but it's not obvious that it will be enough to fight back. And it's uh, actually not going to use it. Interesting. Instead, decides to go for the spell. Let's see where he goes from here. Yeah, he doesn't want to be under the red. Because the mannequin is the problem. Yeah, as well. that's the main problem. Yeah. This is still really tough, I think. Because the mannequin is 2000 attack as mentioned, multiple and multiple times. And uh, I think it's a really solid choice for this event. Okay, so he goes and pushes forward. He did not commit the Lila. Francesco really considering his option, as mentioned, doesn't really need to rush. Game one was quite short, uh, and now we do see the mannequin being used uh, for the first time, I believe, uh, to get this Thunder King Ryo, which obviously couldn't be summoned. Yeah, so now Joshua realizes uh, the big thing is uh, he couldn't because of starter. Yeah. Ooh, and Joshua, I think, uh, for one of the first time, actually gives up uh, a side. Uh, he maybe might have activated his starter a little too soon. And this is now a problem for the German player. Of course, the red is still there. Yeah, Francesco needs to find a way to deal with the red. And if he does... Uh, he needs to get rid of the money in this turn. Yep. Um, there's also the elf. It's still not going to be easy. But here we yeah. see a sprite blue coming down uh, from Francesco. And this changes things quite a bit because it forces Joshua at some point to commit uh, the red. I was getting worried that maybe you are forced into a gigantic or a play and then the red uh, alone is enough. But this does so much. 
Let's see Joshua's response. Uh, seems like he activated the mannequin this time, uh, getting a jet. I think he might be searching for the red. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He searches for the red, uh, trying to unlock his opponent on copy of the card. Uh, Francesco really not feeling uh, this pressure so much uh, for now. We know Joshua has pretty much played on stream uh, thousands of times, uh, so it doesn't really matter for him anymore. But here, Francesco, really the odds, I would say, against him, but in a really, really solid spot. And I don't mind uh, this version of the deck, honestly. I, I mentioned it, and you all know it's my pick, and now we see his own mannequin, so it was like, you wanna go for mannequin? Sure, we can play this game. And what I was saying is, uh, some of the runic advantages are obvious, uh, but the lack of sight and of Zeus are yep. actually nothing to be laughed at. These are huge cards, cards that wins you a lot of games. And I think, uh, you always have to keep that into consideration when using this deck. Let's see. Is he gonna move to the battle phase? He does uh, attacking over the red. And yeah, I hope Francesco didn't actually got the nerves as soon as I said it because it seemed as if he asked his opponent uh, if he went uh, for the red. Uh, while well, instead, as we know, the card was used uh, just by Mannequin Cat. Yeah. And here we see the first Zeus, as mentioned. Great, great stuff. And this is the, the first time we see a Zeus yeah. being summoned on a sprite match. And honestly, this could be... This could be huge. Let's yeah. see. So Joshua is considering his option, just trying to look at the graveyard. If he has something going on, uh, I think he will allow it. Uh, there is no point, and Zeus clears the board, uh, and it is Francesco going second, was able to fight back. Uh, is this gonna be enough, uh, or does Joshua have enough fool? I think he top decked uh, a trap card, yeah. uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which... Uh, let's see, because, yeah, in the deck, I think... Uh, the only one could be, but this is uh, great stuff already. Starter gonna try and force out the Zeus. Uh, but yeah, it's the only trap card in yeah. Joshua's deck actually the Eradicator. Yeah. Does he play anything else? No, that's the only one. Wow. Yeah. Because then would you really side Eradicator against this matchup? I guess uh, it has some merits, but yeah. Here, of course, uh, Jet comes down. Gonna try his best uh, to force out uh, something from the Italian who is not really interested at the moment uh, in doing anything. Let's see. And we do see the help coming down from Joshua. Again, Francesco doesn't seem like he cares too much. He will allow the Iperia. What do you think is his plan mm. at the moment? Uh, again, we know the starter was activated by Joshua, yeah. so he's locked once again. I think he wants to wait uh, as much as he can. Uh, he doesn't have to risk it, though. Yeah, he's probably more afraid of the runic engine at this point uh, than he is uh, of uh, the sprite. But now he's going to be forced to respond with something as the gigantic sprite uh, is on the field, uh, which makes you question whether he should have just gone for it right away. And again, again, waiting. Wow. I think he just wants uh, his opponent to commit as much as possible. Gonna have a big think right now, because as we know, now the attack is doubled, but some spells were used, which means uh, this gigantic sprite cannot actually attack because the battle phase will be skipped, which means, honestly, Francesco is just trying to come up with a reason why he should activate this Zeus. And I'm not sure he's finding it. Yeah, 
just uh, gonna chill for now. But now dark actually happens. Uh, let's hope that Francesco is not uh, overthinking this because he already gave Joshua a plus two yeah. when he could have stopped him on his tracks right away. And yeah, I'm getting uh, a little skeptic about uh, this uh, uh, train of thoughts uh, from the Italian. But well, let's see, maybe he's right and maybe Joshua is just not able to out this Zeus. Yeah, because now Joshua has taken uh, a small advantage with the, with the last two draws. Yeah. Now he goes for Dark. Uh, gonna think about which to steal. It's the blue. And uh, as mentioned, uh, I think it is a trap card, right? Yeah. Uh, the only as surprising yeah. as it could be. The only one that Joshua's playing is the Eradicator Virus, so... Yeah. It seems as if that could be the Eradicator in the end from Joshua. And play is back to Francesco, who is now in a really good spot. I mean, all he has to do is uh, try and figure out if he can close the duel right away. The first thing he does is switch that Zeus to attack position uh, and simply goes over to the dark. Yeah, I mean, I don't really see why he should have activated now the Zeus. But he might have risked it, though, uh, the, the turn before, because uh, now Joshua has four cards in hand. Yeah, because now he gets a search uh, and Joshua pretty much will be able to play with a full end. But evidently, just Francesco didn't have enough uh, to push for game. And he passes back to Joshua with now has six cards in his hands uh, and a lot of options uh, to try and fight back into this game. Yeah, just thinking on uh, when he could have activated the Zeus and maybe yeah. Joshua didn't have this many cards and they would have been easier to fight back. Because now this is tough because Joshua, I don't think, used a Runic card. That's for his battle phase is active once again. Uh, can we actually check some of the cards he might be running? Uh, he has a Unicorn, for example. Uh, and he also played the Oni Bimaru, which would be yeah. great. But he asked right away for one of the runics, I think, with the fountain. So let's see how can how long can you wait, I guess. Maybe for game three. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's keeping it for game three. And uh, as time goes by, there are about 17 minutes left uh, on the round. And this is already going to be so much advantage coming down from... Joshua if this resolves he's definitely considering it he's gonna get back a fountain and honestly I I'm getting skeptic about the plan uh, from the Italian the more this goes through and he finally goes for this Zeus which he's gonna get negated uh, honestly waited a little too long uh, for my personal taste uh, and uh, he's gonna get punished yeah here. Because now Joshua will be able to come back, uh, I would say, quite smoothly. Yeah. He just goes for another fountain, of course. We mentioned it. Not once per turn. Uh, at least if you replace it with another copy. And uh, yeah, this is looking uh, like Joshua's game at this point. But honestly, yeah, I'm really thinking back to that when he just went for the Zeus at the very beginning, I think he could have shut down Joshua. Like when uh, he didn't go for the effect. Yeah, now he's gonna take a look at his opponent end and I think he picked up his cards. Yeah, it is 1-1 one, one at the end. Joshua fights back uh, and we're gonna go to game three. What a game, what a match we are witnessing and honestly, uh, it was uh, definitely a back and forth game uh, for both players. Once again, it was Joshua who went first, tried to establish, uh, and it seems as if he did with quite an impressive opening, uh, thanks to, you know, uh, the gigantic. Yeah. Then he went to the elf, uh, then he set up with the mannequin, and he ended with three face down fountain. That's a lot of stuff. Lining Storm, really the MVP for 
his opponent in this game. But then I think uh, there was a moment in which uh, the game uh, took on a weird note because he played it really well. I was doing, uh, you know, my uh, opinion saying that it was impressive how he was playing so calmly on top four on future match with thousands of people watching at home and uh, a huge crowd here live cheering for them. But maybe I think that's what got him because at the very end, after he cleared everything with the Zeus, Joshua was left with two cards yep. after the starter. He did not use the jet because he was out of sprites. So at that time, if he would have gone for the Zeus, uh, he would have left Joshua with two cards in hand, one of which was the Eradicator. Joshua would have lost the game on the spot, I believe. Unfortunately, it seems as if he was waiting a little, a little too much. Uh, and in the end, uh, it was the German who tied the score. So yep. now, what do you think is going to happen? Because the side decks changed significantly yeah i mean uh, we have said this before um francesco is relying on the artifact sanctum which we haven't seen so far this weekend um we also might be seeing if he really feels like this is gonna be a very grind okay. game the red resonator that's what i'm also interested <laughs> in i mean there are about 15 minutes left uh, this is a weird time because usually when it's around the 10 minutes you always side it in but then I heard the different opinion on the card. Uh, you could side it in with 15 minutes remaining. I gotta say though, maybe it is on Joshua that really needs to put it in because they are both using it. I want to see a Sanctum. I'm not even yeah. gonna lie. Like I want to see this artifact Sanctum coming down. At the same time, I think it will be interesting whether Joshua opponent knows about Sphere mode. He already knows about Lava Golem, so. Can he really play around those cards? Will he be able to? I think we're going to find out. Regardless, uh, one of these guys is going to go home or at least uh, go to his third and fourth match uh, to claim his super rare copy of another verse dragon. Wow, one of these guys advancing to the finals. Uh, we have one more game uh, on our hands. Uh, let's find out who the first finalist for YCS Utrecht will be. Let's go to game three. And we see Sting off already with the Prosperity. Great start. Uh, we know Joshua is not using any hand traps, uh, I believe. So, yeah. He's going to be able to set up whatever board he wants. Uh, and then uh, it is on Joshua to disrupt it uh, with Sphere Mode, Droplet, Lava Golem. Uh, that's why, honestly, I was even considering uh, Francesco playing uh, the outsmarting card and letting Joshua go first. Yeah. That could have been a cool option. We didn't see it. Uh, would be interesting uh, to know what would have happened. But let's take a look at these uh, reveals. Okay, and it's Ooh. the Sanctum already there. So that's a great option if he already has access to his engine. Let's see. I really, really want to see it. But maybe he doesn't have enough gas to just uh, combo through without it. So this could be interesting. And he does not pick it, so unfortunately for the Italian, maybe he doesn't have enough to just combo through. He had to give up on Sanctum, and we know just how strong on a card that is. And yeah, unfortunately, gonna go for the other option. And for the blue, this could actually be Joshua with the advantage uh, then. Yeah, I really needed another piece on the board, because otherwise he would not be able to special summon the blue and get yeah. things going through. The Sanctum might have been huge, honestly, uh, because there's no end traps from Joshua's side at Ooh, all. Oh, and we see actually the carrot as an option. Uh, very interesting here. You don't always see that uh, coming down, and it might be a matter of uh, just trying to play around these uh, lightning storms, which we have seen throughout the weekend. Uh, maybe if you set up both uh, the red and the carrot, then that becomes better. But I'm still uh, really... Uh, looking forward to that Sanctum, and uh, we did not get to see it yet, so... Yeah, maybe he has another one. Maybe, maybe he has it. I would surely be a fan of that, but also the Mannequin Cat is an option. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it is kind of a uh, uh, Sanctum, because you can get the site uh, out of the deck with it. 
and it's great because basically as soon as Joshua activates the runic uh, spells, it is a light fairy. So yeah. if you have Mannequin Cat, that gets you the side. So essentially Mannequin Cat uh, is a Sanctum uh, with legs on, we can say. And uh, let's see if it happens. Now I might be going for the Elf. Yeah, this yeah. is Elf uh, every day of the week. Uh, uh, we could see again uh, the runic combos. Uh, the only thing about Mannequin Cat, of course, Lava Golem, Sphere Mode, one of those uh, six cards uh, really hurt Francesco, but I mean, you have to risk it yeah. uh, at some point. For now, we will just go for the life and Evil Twin combo. Yeah, this is what we have seen multiple times, but this is so bad against Sphere Mode. So will Sphere Mode be in the end from Joshua? Yeah, I mean, he might be punished if Joshua holds a copy of Sphere Mode. Yeah. Yeah. If he does, uh, this is obviously the card we are talking about. Uh, if he's holding a copy of the Sphere Mode, uh, but maybe two face down, giving up on the Sanctum, he could have a copy of the card face down for himself. Uh, are we going to see anything in the draw face? Uh, Francesco is definitely considering it. Gonna be an intense one. Nine minutes left on the clock. Not too long. And we see the sphere mode coming down. Wow. Huge start from Joshua. This already takes away so much for the Italian. Honestly, really, he does need the Sanctum right yeah. now if he has any hope of winning this game. The tip is activated by Joshua. Probably to search or the deck. Yep. And when is even the timing for the Sanctum if he has it? Oh, and there he goes. That's not where you want to see the Sanctum, but let's see. He searched the Fountains, which is also an odd move. Uh, Wanna really prioritize these drawers. Maybe we can see a face down cosmic from Francesco. And here is where we are gonna quickly find out. Uh, okay, just asking uh, our judge for some help with that set, it seems, but. As they go through it, as mentioned, now we already know some of the cards which are being kept by Francesco. It is on Joshua, though. We can now pretty much force to draw two fresh new cards from yeah. the deck. He does not have access to the battle phase, though. Let's keep that in mind, because with eight minutes remaining on the clock, uh, we might actually get to a sudden death uh, uh, game. Let's see if there is going to be a Cosmic. Uh, and the Red Resonator was sided in by Joshua, which actually is a huge deal coming into the match. Uh, he's going to use the Eugene. Is there going to be a response from the Italian? And we said that uh, the Red Resonator would have been uh, pretty much being needed, decided uh, again. Yeah. Needed for Joshua. We know you skip the battle phase. If there are eight minutes left, uh, you need a way to actually uh, gain or deal some damage. Uh, and uh, we have seen some other players siding the third fusion, the one which gains a thousand life points in the end phase. Uh, Joshua still sticking with the resonator. Makes sense. You can do it in the main phase. Yeah. Don't need to go to the end phase. And it is a cosmic, so this is huge. There are seven minutes, once again, you don't want to be paying life points too close to that, but it's still plenty of time. You cut off your opponent from drawing two cards, so great response. And still some hope here for the Italian fans in the crowd. And an impermanence to shut down the other copy of Fountain. So I think it's a really good play here. Let's see if Joshua has a response. I think he said okay. So yeah, that's going to be banished and now Let's see if Joshua has uh, some sprite cards. It all comes down to this. Yeah, that's really what he needs. Does he have any? Also, let's keep in mind that Impermanence uh, was in the central column. I don't think Joshua is one who would make such a mistake, but let's see it. Oh my God. Oh. Okay, <laughs> for a moment he was placing... Yeah, he just asked, I think. He was about to do it. 
and yeah, at the very last second, he realizes that that was the central column, uh, which would have been huge. Uh, and instead, uh, let's see if that is a site or a sanctum. It is not, and this is uh, still a huge deal. You get rid of the Eugene, and then it turns into a top deck war. Oh my. Let's see the last card. I think Joshua is only with one card remaining, and the starter of the top was a huge top deck, possibly. And face. Oh my, this is, uh, this is something. This is something. Any level two would be great here from Francesco. Can he pick up anything from the top? It doesn't seem as if he does, and then he would be forced to give it back to his opponent. This is coming down to the wire. And only five minutes remaining. Tribute summon for Scythe. What is this? Wow. <laughs> oh my god. Tribute summon for Artifact Scythe. What is this? But yeah, this gives Joshua great chances. But without a battle phase, he will be forced to use the Resonator. Let's see if he can top deck. Hyperia is a great one to do it. Uh, any runic card, and it's the starter. And now he will come back into the game. Absolutely, absolutely. The sight uh, was obviously a great one, but this is just uh, heartbreaking for Francesco. I think he takes it any day of the week, and Joshua, outside of time, doesn't really have anything to worry about. And I think actually an honorable handshake by Francesco. Great match. What a match, what a match. Honestly, you can still feel the tension in the air, the crowd going crazy. What did we just witness? That was an amazing a match. top four match. Really, I mean. And Joshua with the comeback after losing game one, honestly, just a single infinite impermanence was enough to stop him in his tracks. Uh, Francesco doing his best, game one showing off his dominance, uh, then game two, back and forth. Uh, really, we couldn't tell which one was going to take it. Uh, it seemed as if Francesco would just fly to the final with a swift 2-0, due to, to the Zeus. Uh, in the end, maybe a slight mistake in game two, which could probably cost him the match. Uh, and it's Joshua, who, as soon as he saw a chance to take back the match, uh, he capitalized on it, uh, took as many chances as possible. He won game two. We go to game three and madness happens. Uh. I mean, I think we witnessed one of our crazy game of our whole weekend. Yeah. For serious. What a I mean. way to do it. Prosperity coming down, revealing Artifact Sanctum. The crowd going crazy, but then the Sanctum cannot be picked up. Joshua just needed that extra kick to get things going, to get those evil twins combos. Then we look at each other and we're like, sure, this good looks really good. But Joshua is siding three copies of Sphere Mode, uh, plus three copies of Lava Golem, uh, and he had the and Sphere had Mode. Uh, sphere Mode at his opponent, uh, went through a series of play. In the end, the very last card was the Set Smashers, uh, which actually made it so that Joshua was left top decking with one card in hand. Uh, the same for his opponent, yeah. uh, just the Sphere Mode. Any level two was good. Yeah. Any level two was enough, so you gotta feel bad uh, for Francesco. So many different top decks, but in the end, it was the worst of the deck. The artifact site, which for a moment just looked as yeah. if it could have been enough in time to push those 2200 damage. Let's be real, the starter was one of the best top decks for Joshua, who came back into the match, claimed it, and is now walking into the finals. Just one match remaining. Who will be the winner of YCS Utrecht? We are going to find out soon. But before doing that, uh, thank you guys for being with us throughout the whole weekend. Uh, this was the last match uh, being commentated by the Italian team. Uh, our lovely German Pero commentators will handle the finals. So now we'll get you to Ed and Joshua for the winner interview. Thank you, Marcello Alberto. We salute your service over this weekend. Thank you for commentating this amazing top four round. And speaking of that top four round, I'm joined by Joshua Schmidt, the winner 
of that round and you had an amazing audience for all of that. How does it feel to be having that level of energy shouted at you when you're making great plays? You don't hear all of it because you have the headphones, <laughs> but the fact that you can hear it through the headphones, I guess, speaks for itself. Yeah, no, it, it feels pretty good. So there were some great moments in there. So going through each play, so game one, you were going first, but you started with possibly a below average hand. Yes, yes. Uh, there was the imperm from Francesco, double lava golem. The smashes on Fountain, so you scooped. Yeah. And then we go into game two. Francesco ashes your first play, but then basically you, everything went pretty good from there for you. It seemed like it could have been a wobbly moment, but you played around it. Talk about what was happening in your head at that point, because at this point you're in the basically the semi-final, you're getting ashed. <laughs> What's going through your mind? I mean, I'm, in game one, I was really praying for no hand trap because, like, I mean, my hand was awful for going first, and uh, I got hand trapped, and that's why I couldn't play. Game two in my hand, I wasn't too worried about it because I knew with the, the cards that I had, I could easily play through two or three hand traps even. I was fine. Uh, the lightning storm hurt a bit more than, than the hand traps, but uh, luckily the follow-up was ended up not taking me out. And then, yeah, we had a pretty, pretty good nail biter in game three, I think. Oh, you certainly did going through all this. There was the sphere mode. Everyone went nuts for the sphere mode. There was the cosmic cyclone that popped your fountain. So people got a little bit worried at that moment. But then there was the tributing sphere, uh, the sphere for Scythe, which was then another moment. But then you got straight into that sprite starter. And you have never heard a crowd go more nuts than when that sprite starter came out. It just got you straight into all of your good options on the deck. And that's when the handshake came out. So was that a big relief for you there? The biggest relief was, first of all, when he chained the Smasher to get rid of his last level 2 monster, because that's... I knew when, if that's going to stick around, uh, he's going to win the game either way. He doesn't need to draw a good card. Uh, and I think if I, if I chain the Destruction, he has to chain the Smasher, simply because he gets rid of my last level 2. And if the last card in my hand is a Sprite monster, he prevents my, my turn that way. Um, he couldn't know that the last card in my hand was another normal summon, so... I think it was well played by him to chain that Smashers, and that me meant it came down to him either drawing a level 2 monster or not, and he ended up not finding one, which ended up giving me the win, so uh, that was very fortunate. Very fortunate. And now here you are, a finalist at YCS Utrecht 2022. Very, very exciting. Wish you all the luck in that final. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Guys, don't go anywhere. We're going to give the players a few minutes just to get ready for that final round. But before then, we have a final of our own to get over with. So don't go anywhere. We'll be literally right back. <laughs> 